And um, next we're going to have Cliff Bechtold fr uh, from um, BMS, Bristol-Myers Squibb. That's correct. And, uh, and he's going to be talking about his uh, anti-myostatin drug. Yeah, I'll cover all our anti-myostatin program, and since I knew Michael was covering me and does a great job uh, uh, over to myostatin, I won't go through the mechanism of action on, on myostatin again. Um, and if you do want more information about uh, these assets that we're talking about preclinically and also other anti-myostatin inhibitors that have been developed uh, for Duchenne and for other diseases, there's a great uh, webinar on YouTube by Lee Sweeney from November of 2015 that really covers in, in much more detail than we're allowed to in the time frame here um, about myostatin so you can learn more about it. I'm here to talk to you today about BMS 986089 and, and introduce a new number for it, which is RG6206. And hopefully we'll have some name to call it soon that you can't pronounce, um, but to make it easier than remembering all these numbers. The important thing is that the BMS, the compound you've come to know through our presentations here around the, as, the, as the BMS myostatin program will be transferring over to the Roche myostatin program. And we're very thrilled about that because, I mean, Roche is a leader in rare diseases. Um, they've done a lot of work in SMA and other, and other areas of neuromuscular. And um, it's, it's great to see uh, the two teams coming together to advance this molecule. I think what's important, the way we look at this, is it's a relay race. And we've been running with this baton, and right now we're handing it off over to Roche in the very good hands, competent hands. But both teams are currently running and, and, and moving this program forward. What's important is that if you're in the program in one of our studies now, know that you'll have no change in anything that, that you're experiencing. Uh, the, the study will be continue as planned, and there will be no, no impact to you at all. If you're in uh, looking at one of our upcoming studies, which I'll talk more about, that is on track and continue to move forward. And I'm thrilled with the commitment I've seen from my colleagues at, at Roche to continue that development. So just a, a, a little disclosure and disclaimer. My name is Cliff Bechtold. I'm with BMS, but I'm here to represent uh, this molecule on behalf of both BMS and Roche. So uh, BMS 986089, our myostatin program, is an investigational anti-myostatin, which is, as you've heard, a negative regulator of muscle growth, in particular skeletal muscle, and that the preclinical data is very well established that by those animal species lacking, and even humans lacking, the myostatin uh, gene and function, um, have, uh, have demonstrated a hypertrophy or an increasement in the size of, of their muscles. So based upon a lot of the literature that Michael covered, uh, a lot of the data that we generated, uh, I'm going to jump to when we brought this into the clinic in 2015. And we did a, a normal healthy volunteer study where we studied single and multiple doses of uh, BMS 986089, dosed subcutaneously. So a pitch of the skin and, and injection under, underneath the skin and the abdomen with doses up to 180 milligrams. And the drug was very well tolerated. The most common adverse events were mild injection site reactions, a little redness of the skin, with no intervention needed, and it resolved on its own. In that study, we were able to demonstrate, and, and we've shown this data here previously, so I'm not going to uh, go over it again, but we saw an increase in muscle volume and total lean body mass in those healthy volunteers uh, following multiple doses of BMS 986089. <laughs> The extent and duration of myostatin reduction increased with the dose, and so it performed very well for what we'd hoped it to do. What was nice was that it was able to titrate the level of myostatin suppression and correlate that in a dose-dependent manner. And so based upon that, we took this, uh, the program into the next clinical study. And this is an ongoing study that we started um, in 2015 with boys, I'm sorry, was in, uh, at the end of 15 and 16 with boys with uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy evaluating the safety, tolerability, and the pharmacokinetics, or looking at the drug exposure uh, um, in, in the boys with Duchenne. This study uh, is ongoing. It's, it's currently closed enrollment because we uh, completed enrollment and, uh, in the studies that were conducted both in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, before I move on, the, the data from that will be coming at, we're right now in the middle of analyzing that data, and at uh, working with our colleagues at Roche, they will be released at a future meeting uh, as appropriate. Uh, study 16 is, is so what, was, uh, what we're planning to do and what we just started, we achieved our primary endpoint, which was to look at the safety PK and the target engagement or the ability to lower myostatin as we had projected. And based upon that results, we started a global study in Duchenne muscular dystrophy. This is a double blind uh, placebo controlled study to look at the effectiveness, safety, and tolerability 
of uh, this molecule in the presence uh, in ambulatory boys with Duchenne. The study is now open to enrollment in the US, and I've listed out a number of the states where it's currently conducted at, and also will be opening up globally in the near future. This will be a 48-week study in, in a two-to-one randomization, so participants will have a higher probability of getting active drug versus placebo, and carried on for 48 weeks with a rollover uh, available after the 48 weeks. That will be a, a, a double-blind fashion. And we are looking to enroll boys within the, the 6 to 11 <laughs> inclusive age group. Uh, our entry criteria and a lot of the exclusion criteria are, you'll be able to locate um, on clinicaltrials.gov. Um, but it's important to realize that, as with myostatin inhibitors Michael covered, they're not related to or restricted to any particular mutations. I just would like to direct you that if you do want more information or find out about a center that's near, near you, um, in the U.S., you can go to the BMS trial, dmd.com, and, and register there, and you'll be notified as sites open near you. Um, and if you want more information about the design of the study and the uh, locations globally, you can go to clintrials.gov at this location or just type in the BMS 986089, and you'll find additional information on that. So with that, I'll thank you, and thank you to all the families and the boys that are participating in, in our clinical program. Thank you.